Good afternoon and welcome to Digital Natives, Content Creation's Frontline, where we ask media pioneers how to successfully build community, produce, and write in a multi-platform world. Just a reminder, you can join us on the live chat stream um, on our YouTube live chat stream right now and ask us questions there. We have a live chat host today joining us, Miss Katie Stegman. Good afternoon, Katie. Hi, everyone. Leave me your questions or comments on our Twitter handle, Twitter handle at DigNative Series or on our YouTube page, and I will ask Kim and Greg any of your questions. That's right. Speaking of Kim and Greg, we are joined today by the big YouTube prankster and founder of Mediocre Films, Mr. Greg Benson, as well as the actress and producer, Miss Kim Evie. Both have been playing in the digital space since 2006, and they are some of the original digital Luminati, and we are thrilled to have them in-house today. Good afternoon, Kim and Greg. Good afternoon. Oh, hello. <laughs> nice to see you, Brian. Thank you so much for joining us here today on Digital Natives. You're welcome. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So let's get right to it. How did, what, first off, what were you two doing before you got into online video? I think we had gone out for a steak dinner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, we went to Outback. Yeah, Outback Steakhouse. Yeah. We had one of those big, awesome blossoms or whatever they call them. Okay, great. There's a lot of fat in those things. Okay, great. But before you went for the steak dinner, was there anything else? Were you working in the entertainment, in the entertainment community in any other regard? Oh, I get it. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, we were. <laughs> yes, we were. We were both. Uh, we were both actors. You were both actors. Mm -hmm. As okay, got it. Got it. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. So, um, so uh, both of you got into, into digital video in two thousand six, and how did you come into the digital video space? You want to do a funny sure. answer? No, I'll do. I'll do the actual <laughs> answer. I think we we start off with one funny answer, then we just do the normal you know, boring stuff. So <laughs> let's get on to that stuff. It's not gonna be boring, it's really gonna be amazing. Stick around, you're gonna love this. Um, so, okay, so yeah, as Kim said, we started off as professional actors. I moved out here in the early 90s uh, from Texas, from Dallas, Texas. Okay. And We're uh, very old. Yes, extremely old. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, I think in my late 60s now. Uh, and so we, I mean, she moved out years later, but uh, you know, started doing a lot of commercials. I did over 100 national commercials and TV and film stuff and and then really wanted to have more control over what I was doing. So mm -hmm. Kim and I met in uh, a, a sketch comedy theater called the Acme Comedy Theater. Okay. Where we wrote and performed original comedy sketches. Got it. Yeah. And then we got married. Oh, you guys are married. We married each other. <laughs> oh, okay, got yeah, it. We did. Yeah, we, did we totally that. married each other. I actually know that you're married. That was that was fake. That was fake surprise. <laughs> it was good. It was good. 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 I Thank believe you. it. Thank you. Thank you. An Oscar-worthy surprise. Yeah. So you guys met during Acme Theater, and yeah. then you were doing you were performing live together, and then you got married. Yeah. And what? then. Oh, yeah. bleh, bleh. <laughs> we should have decided who was going to answer what. You know, first. from now on, you answer everything. Okay. I'll just All right, sit here. You just sit here. Let's see. Right. Okay. So uh, we we yes, we got married, and then um, this actually should be the part you talk about because this is the part I'll talk about all your stuff, and you talk about all of my stuff. So Greg wanted to uh, uh, learn how to edit and direct because he had actually done in the early 90s he had a public access sketch comedy show and he was using video and editing on all their big machines that they could use and so you know with the advent of max and final cut he thought you know what i want to do this again so um we started uh, adapting sketches that we had done on the stage for uh for him to film and he did excellent excellent yes so and is that right about the time when you formed mediocre films Mediocre Films uh, is the name that I used for the very first sketch that I shot, which was actually in 2004, shot a thing called The Date. That was my first short film. And it Kim was actually a short film, not, not a sketch, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the early stuff that I shot was short film style, which means we shot it on video, but I submitted it to film festivals, and um, uh, it actually did quite well. It, the Date got into a lot of festivals, and we, we went to Hawaii to support it over at the Maui Film Festival, and kind of fell in love with Hawaii at that time. It's the first time we were there together, but uh, but that's what we, that's how we started 
with the digital video stuff. It started off with sketches, a lot of things that we had written for the Acme Comedy Theater became these these short film style things. Okay, that's excellent. That's but I had to pick a name, so I just thought, well, I'll go with mediocre films. That way I'm setting the bar low. And if they're funny, then people will be pleasantly surprised. It's you true. Don't, you don't want to you wanna get, you don't have to set the bar too high. Exactly. No, no you don't. <laughs> yeah. Give, and then people are just going to be in for disappointment. Give yourself room for growth. Room exactly, for growth, definitely. Yeah. Well, to date, Mediocre Films has uploaded 255 uh, videos uh, to its YouTube channel. Yeah, that's just on the main channel. Like, all together on all my channels, about a thousand videos. That is phenomenal. That really is phenomenal. And, of course, one of your biggest successes early on was Gorgeous Chinese Chicken Machine Show. Or and Gorgeous Tiny Chicken Machine Show. Gorgeous. As Gorgeous Tiny, tiny Chicken gorgeous Machine tiny. Show. Gorgeous Tiny, thank yeah. you. Yeah. As, <laughs> as people like to say when they, when they say the correct name of the thank show. You, thank you. <laughs> gorgeous Tiny ch Chinese nope, show. No, no, no Chinese. Gorgeous Tiny Chicken Machine Show. There you That's go. Right. Thank it. you. Yes. All right, all my prejudice is coming up here early on in the show. So she's where, not even Chinese. You I know, know she's not. I know. Where did the idea of, of for that show come from? That was also it was a sketch that uh, you know we wrote for Acme Comedy Theater, and uh, I just I begged Craig to please shoot it for me because uh, I'd sort of seen how YouTube worked, and um, you know at the time, way back in the day, you went to the YouTube front page, and there was just a list of videos that they had curated, and that they said you know you might like this video, and you know just as it is. To Today, the thumbnails were tiny and you know it was basically the title and then you know several lines of explaining what it was and uh, I thought oh this will be great because you know I knew it would be vibrant colors and so I knew that the thumbnail would be really you know interesting to watch and uh, interesting to see and then the title gorgeous tiny chicken machine show was weird so I just thought together if YouTube actually put it on their front page like it would be a winning uh, combination and lo it was and lo it was so yeah. you know you and even, behold you know even back then that thumbnails were important i yeah i mean it just it was instinctual instinctive instinctual mm -hmm. yes i mean it just made it's, sense to it me it was instinctipated yeah it. it was instinctible um yeah, because, you know, I mean, even back then, it's just, you're just looking at a, a, a list of thumbnails. And so mm -hmm. I just figure, you know, if there's one that's bright and there's, and, you know, it is fun and colorful, people, people will click on it. Yeah. Definitely. Well, going back into the archives a little bit deeper, we can't talk about some of your earlier works um, from Mediocre Films without talking about Retarded Policeman. And, um, you know, I actually was at an event where the Retarded Policeman was screening, I think it was back in 2008. And I remember you uh, actually asking, I was standing in the back, you were asking, asking people if they found it kind of offensive or what, they, what their thoughts were for it. So um, I just, you know, wanted to, uh, you know, get, ask you what inspired you to create that show and what conversation did you want to explore with, with the show? It's actually a lot simpler than you, than you would think. We didn't really <laughs> want to explore any sort of conversation. We, listen, the sole purpose of me making videos is to have fun and create things that I think are funny. Mm -hmm. And Kim and I were driving around one day, and it's as simple as this. We would always throw sketch ideas back and forth and you know, mm -hmm. video ideas. And Kim actually said while we were driving around, what if we had a sketch about a retarded policeman? And I said, well, that's not only a sketch, but that's the name of the sketch. Mm -hmm. And then we threw back and forth, like, oh, you know, Kim said, oh, he could pull people over and go, hi, and, you know, I like monkeys, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> and we threw back and forth some dialogue, and before you know it, there, we, well, there's sort of like three videos here. I think we could do three videos out of this. And then I said, you know, we actually know an actor who is mentally challenged. He has Down syndrome. I wonder if he would play this part. Got it. And Kim said, no, no, <laughs> that's going too far. Yeah. Do not do that. And I said, I think it's going too far to have someone who isn't, you know, retarded to play the, to play the role. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I reached out to Scott Perry, the brother of Josh Perry, and said, do you think your brother would want to do this? And he said, absolutely. And he asked him, and he said, yes, let's do it. So wow. I wrote the scripts, and we shot the first three in a day, and they blew up so quickly that we realized, oh, I guess we have to make more of these. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, good for you, good for you. And have you, has there been any, you know, I'm sure you've get, you get everything on Facebook, but I mean, is there, but overall, what is, what is the tone been of the comments on, on, on the YouTube comment chain? Everybody loves it. No one has ever said anything negative. <laughs> really? 
<laughs> great answer. Great answer. Great answer. Great. Well, speaking of the YouTube comment stream, um, let's go check out the live streams. Katie, are there any hot burning questions out there? Uh, yes, I actually have quite a few. But um, most importantly, Gavin wants to know if any of your sketches and or pranks have gone very wrong. Okay, Gavin wants to know, have any of your sketches or pranks gone very wrong? You know, the, the sketches don't really go wrong, except when you have technical issues. Like, we shot one thing in a restaurant. What was the thing that we shot? Uh, happy Sad Waitress? Happy Sad Waitress. We shot a thing there, and we were just plagued with technical issues. And so that video just sort of languished for about nine months in post-production before we were able to fix all the technical issues and release it. But as far as when things go wrong, that, yeah, that... That, that really comes down to when we're doing pranks and people don't really uh, appreciate being pranked, which has happened a couple of times. I did get, I did get hit in the throat one time Ooh. by someone who didn't like when I pulled a little prank called the ham shoulder prank. It turns out people do not like it when you put ham on them. No. And that was the whole joke. I would just go up to people and go, hey, how you doing? And ask them a question. But then when I removed my hand, there would be like a little piece of ham right there. <laughs> just a piece of ham. Which was inspired by a terrible movie, uh, Caddyshack 2. Chevy Chase did that in a scene in, Ca in Caddyshack 2. Got he says, it. oh, don't say yourself short, whatever he says. And Got then, it. Yeah. We'll do, we're going to take one more question from the live chat, Katie. What, right. else is, what else is ha happening out there? Um, I have a question from Fez. He actually wants to know, what were your dream jobs when you guys were really young? Because he says he wanted to be a tree when he was two years old. So, if you guys have anything like that. That is so crazy, because I wanted to be an orange flower. <laughs> I did. I wanted, that's what I wanted to be. So, You can't, tree, make, can't make money flower. at that, though. That's... Well, I think if you got a job at a, a florist, and they needed you to dress up as an orange flower and hand out some flyers or something? Or just wave to the traffic? Oh, yeah. I suppose you could. could. Yeah, you should look into that. I'm going to. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Excellent. I had, I had my dream jobs. My dream jobs were to work uh, at record stores and movie theaters so that I could get discounted records and, and free movies and popcorn. And that's exactly what I did when I was 16, 17. Actually, I was working at a record store when I was 15. And they were record stores back then. <laughs> They're not, not your compact disc machine. Stores. <laughs> That's so weird because I, I, my dream was to work at a Dairy Queen, and then I did. And, and you were robbed at Knife Point. <laughs> also a dream of mine. Okay, great. It's true. Great. She was robbed at Knife Point. That's <gasps> right, a, well, a true story. Well, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to the digital native questions. Um, we, we can't talk about online video with talking about the guild. Where did that line, line up for you in, in your journey, Kim? Um, well, after Gorgeous Tiny Chicken Machine Show, we were shooting that, and um, I was friends with Felicia Day, and she had a script that uh, was amazing called The Guild that was about online gamers, and um, it was a half-hour television pilot, and she'd shown it to people in the industry, and people said, this is amazing, it's way too niche, like, we can't put this on TV, what's this online gamer thing, who knows about this, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so I read it, and I said, naively, like, oh, let's, we can totally do this. Like, let's just do this. We, we do Gorgeous Tiny Chicken Machine Show in my back office. We can just do this in your house. And, mm -hmm. and that's... Did you ever think it would blow up to be as big as it, big as it became? Uh, no, there's no way that I would have known, like, the trajectory that it took. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, it had it definitely, like, there was never a doubt in my mind that something, that a lot of people would be interested in it if they were able to find it. Because Felicia's great, she's a great actress, she's a talented writer, and, um, you know, at the time, even though people weren't as familiar with online gaming, there were still 10 million people playing World of Warcraft at the time, so, mm -hmm. and they didn't have a series dedicated to, you know, the, to people who played online games, so. Got it, got it. Know. Well, thank you so much for joining us for Digital Natives Content Creations Frontline. And that is how Greg and Kim came to become Digital Natives. Next up, <laughs> next up, <laughs> Community Building 101. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a closer look at Community Building 101. We are joined today here by Kim Evie and Mr. Greg Benson of Mediocre Films and formerly of Geek and Sundry. Welcome, Greg and Kim. Hi. 
Are we are we pretending like we? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. We actually we actually do different segments on the show. Oh, okay. So now we're now in a different segment. <laughs> I probably should have told you that before we started, right? Okay, good. Well, so glad to have you here, Greg and Kim. So, Greg, you currently have over nine hundred thousand subscribers on your YouTube channel and on Mediocre Films. So that's very impressive. How did you how did you get to those nine hundred thousand subscribers? I created nine hundred thousand profiles and subscribed just one at a time. I would just do that. It takes years, but that's how I did it. Okay, good. Well, and you actually joined online video in 2006, right? I did. I've, I've been on YouTube since 06, and um, I guess I've just been really lucky. You know, thanks to Kim, we had a lot of early successes on YouTube. We got on the front page a couple mm -hmm. times in a row. And with that came our first couple million views and our first 10, 20,000 subscribers. And then certain we introduced certain series that just built up the subscriber base, and now I kind of focus on pranks, and those have turned out to be really popular. And so, whenever I have a, another hit video like like this recent Facebook video, I know we're going to talk about um, it's you know the, the subscriber number just jumps. It jumps. Got so it. hopefully, right around the end of the year or beginning of next year, I'll I'll hit a million. Excellent, excellent. If there's one piece of advice you would give to a new YouTube creator coming to the space for the first time, what, what advice would you, would you give them in terms of strategy for building community? Don't do it. Do not do it. <laughs> it's, it's a tough game. You, you have to love what you do. You have to absolutely love making videos and having fun doing it uh, to, to make the whole thing worth it. Because the, once, you, once you start with a YouTube channel and you get some viewership and people are subscribed and they're waiting for your next video, you can't really go more than a week or so without putting up another video. Some people put up two or three videos a week. I put up one video a week on my main channel, but there is that regularity that you have to keep up. Plus I have other channels as well that I put mm -hmm. videos up on and it's definitely a full-time job and you kind of have to balance your real life responsibilities with you know, what people expect of you on YouTube mm -hmm. to keep the videos flowing. Well, speaking of popularity, one of your biggest popular characters right now is Yeshman Blacken. How did he become so popular? And uh, is, is he boosting your numbers on a regular basis? No, he does not <laughs> boost my numbers. The, my, the Yeshman videos are sometimes some of my lowest viewed videos, but I love doing that character so much that I don't care and I'm gonna keep doing them every <laughs> once in a while because it's just too much fun. He's just this this old, insane, cantankerous, cantankerous man. Yeah, and he's just so much fun to play that I absolutely love playing around with him. He He's had some videos that have done very well. But, uh, yeah, overall, he's, yeah, I just do him just because I love him so much. Got it, got it. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you a few more questions of you, Kim. Yes. I want to talk about Geek and Sundry. That has yes. been a huge, huge part of your career. Absolutely. And you know, how, how did that evolve from coming, going from the guild into Geek and Sundry? Um, well, Felicia was one of the uh, people that YouTube approached when they were looking to, you know, do the original channels, and uh, so I went in with her. We we had to come up with a slate of um, shows that we would do if we were, you know, going to be given the opportunity to do them and be funded by YouTube, and. Uh, so we went in with, uh, I don't know, a lot, like maybe 11 series or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, once we um, found out that we were going to be one of the channels, I think we called it down to maybe 11, I mean, to maybe like five or six that we started with. So, but um, yeah, so it was just sort of Was the there a specific step. strategy that you guys were creating when you were pitching YouTube and, you know, when you got the funding over all the shows that you were, you know, that you were pitching them? Was there a strategy you had in mind that it had to be in a certain vertical or... Um, you know, it's interesting. At the time, there, it was, I think, I'm trying to remember now exactly what shows that we, you know, we had pitched, but I think it was more like, you know, there was a project that Felicia wanted to do, and there was a project that I really wanted to do, and then there were people that we knew that we wanted to work with, and, you know, there was definitely um, the geek vertical that was happening. You know, we ended up doing Sword and Laser with Veronica Belmont and Tom Merritt, and, um, you know, that's a, that was a book club uh, mm -hmm. online, and uh, so all of them were very specifically in the geek, in the geek culture. Yeah, it, I mean, we called the channel, or you know, Felicia chose Geek and Sundry so that there would be a little bit of play, so that there could be other stuff, and um, you know, so like I did a show called uh, Written by a Kid, which uh, is kind of like Drunk History, if you've ever seen that, where drunk people tell history. This is little kids make up stories, and mm -hmm. then. Um, 
you know, professional directors take the stories and make them into, into uh, real shorts. So that wasn't particularly geeky, but um, so that was more sundry. <laughs> But it is awesome, and that is a series that everyone needs to, no, it's, to it's search out and watch. It's it. quite, quite good. Yeah, yeah, it's excellent. It's definitely one of my favorite things definitely, that I've definitely. ever worked on. Well, another main thing that content creators can do when building community is look at SEO, search engine optimization. And one of the best things that content creators can do in building search engine optimization is titling their, ver their videos very wisely and smartly. So of course, we can't talk about SEO, Kim, without talking about one of your po most popular videos, Two Hot Girls in a Shower. <laughs> it's so smart. Oh, and speaking boy. of thumbnails, look at these thumbnails here, so oh, no. fun. Ah. I mean, you really, you really knew how to, how to pick a good thumbnail there. So was there, I mean, I can't think of a greater title. I mean, obviously there was a, a kitschiness to your show. There was never any nudity that you actually showed, but no. the title, you know, Two Hot Girls in a Shower probably got you a lot of viewers that you probably wouldn't have otherwise have gotten. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, that was literally just a little uh, fun thing that my friend Julie and I did. We, we had done a video, um, you know, for, for Acme together. It was just like a tiny bit of this bigger video and people said, oh, you guys were so funny doing that. And so I said to her one day, would you, what would you think? And this again was early, early YouTube. So I, I knew, you know, that what was happening on YouTube was, you know, well, the same thing that's happening today, frankly, you know, like boobs, <laughs> hot girls, sex, it always sells. So I thought- And kittens. And kittens, yeah. <laughs> so I just thought, uh, I said, if we did this and we called it Two Hot Girls in the Shower, just to see, and I said, literally just to see how many hits we could get, do you want to do it? And she said, yes. So, but I'm actually, you know, strangely proud of it because it's, you know, for, as enticing and, uh, you know, ridiculous as the title is, you know, the, the content is fun and funny and we had a good time doing it. And how so. many views do you have to, to a date on those videos? I don't even know. Millions. Yeah, you I do mean, have millions, right? A know. lot. Yeah. It's Got a it. very funny show. A lot of people may not realize it's a, it's a comedic question and answer show. And the uh, relationship that Kim and Julie have is very much like a Burns and Allen type of thing. Like the, the George Burns and Gracie yes, Allen thing. Yes, it's very much, yes. Is, I'm sarcastic and mean to her and she's dumb and very, very funny. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Well, speaking of millions of viewers, let's go back to the live stream on YouTube. Katie, how's it going out there? <laughs> It's going great. I actually have a two-part question for you guys. First of all, Arca wants to know if there's any YouTubers that you guys want to work with that do sketches or pranks with. And also, I'm being flooded with requests uh, for Greg for you to do the Yashmin impress impression and if Kim could do one as well. <laughs> That's pretty great. Um... I'm not, I'm not dressed as Yeshman, but if you cut over to Brian, you might hear Yeshman. <laughs> he might be here in, in the studio, uh, maybe a little bit. If, uh, he's over here. You want to try him? Okay. Do you have to cut? With, no, with I mean, Brian? with you, oh, okay. it, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm old. <laughs> That's his catchphrase. <laughs> Yeshman, I'm old. Yeah. It's going to appear in his tombstone. Blah, blah. Okay, yeah. that, was, that was lovely. Thank yeah. That was lovely, yes. And as far as YouTubers that you know, we want to collaborate with, well, I, I do a lot of collaborations with, uh, with different YouTubers, and I've collaborated with just about everybody, but I've never done, I've never done a prank with Prank vs. Prank. Uh, I've only done one with Vitaly, who's now exploded, as a guy who's just, not physically, he hasn't physically exploded, that would be horrible, uh, but his channel has exploded in popularity recently, and we did... We did a prank that just didn't quite work out a while back. A thing with him and Jack Vale and Rahat of Magic of Rahat. Another guy who I haven't done a full prank with. So there are a few guys who I'd love to go and do some silly pranks with. That's, that would be a lot of fun. And I love uh, Hank and John Green. So, you know, yeah. I hope to help them produce something someday. And uh, I love the Gregory Brothers and... Uh, uh, Rhett and Link. Actually, Rhett and Link, I, I already got a chance to work with them. They did one of the Written by a Kids, so, yeah. But there's a ton of people that, you know, I would love to work with them. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, getting back to the Guild, Kim, we're, we're talking about community building in this segment. How did, how did the community build around the Guild initially? Um, you know, Felicia Day, honestly. And that's the key, I think, you know, people... Uh, the show itself became sort of a phenomenon, but, you know, 
from the beginning, it was Felicia, you know, going to websites, going to forums, and saying, you know, and making things very personal. And uh, not only that, but going back and following up. So, you know, from the very beginning, and, you know, obviously things have changed a lot nowadays. You can't go to a forum and say, hi, I, you know, have a web series that I made and I hope you like it because everybody's doing that. But back then, people were like, oh, cool, let me check this out. And then if somebody would leave a comment saying, hey, that was great, then, you know, Later on, there'd be a comment from Felicia saying, hey, thank you, so. I really love what you said about the follow-up, and I think that's key in terms of anybody who is, a, who is a marketer. And if you are creating original online content, chances are, if you're producing it yourself, you're also marketing it yourself. And the follow-up is super key. So, I mean, I really love that you said follow-up. You know, you have, you have to knock more than once, don't you? Well, yeah, absolutely, because it's not really, I mean, you know, getting out of the marketing space and into, you know, just Felicia as a person, because she never, thinks of herself, she's, she doesn't think of herself as a brand or a commodity necessarily. Mm -hmm. She's just a person who's interacting with her fans. And so, you know, again, it becomes the follow-up is just really part of, you know, having a dialogue with your community and, and really feeling, making them feel like they are a part of your community and you in turn are, you know, a part of their community and that you're going to talk with them and interact and it's not just, you know, like, hey, I'm on this thing, hey, you know, look at me, hey, you know. One of the reasons that Felicia is super successful is that she um, she's a great taste maker and she's constantly putting up links of things that she finds interesting and funny and, you know, so people who follow her on various social media know that not only are they gonna get to talk to her, they're, all, they're also gonna, you know, find out about cool things because of her, so. Got it, got it, excellent, excellent. Well, Greg, back to you. Uh, speaking of, you know, other huge videos and huge successes, uh, you recently had a major success on your Mediocre Films YouTube channel called Real Life Facebook. I can't believe it took you half an hour to get, that's how we met. <laughs> that's, it's amazing, that's how we met. This, is, is, this is a good story. That is how we, I, 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 I think the guy who was in the very front of your video was just amazing. He was really charming. Well, that's you you're talking about. Oh, you're talking I'm talking about, about myself. myself. Oh, I am talking about myself. Yeah. My goodness, that is how we met. And it is funny, it's a small web, web video world, isn't it? So one of the questions I have for you, Greg, is how did you get that video to get to 1.9 plus million views in a little over two weeks. Same way I did the subscribers, I watched it 1.9 million times, <laughs> which takes a lot of time because I had to watch it in full each time for it to really count. Uh -huh. So I've just taken a break from that right now. I don't know, it just, you know how video, videos yeah. just spread. When they say a video goes viral, it literally spreads around like a <sighs> virus. One person sends it out to, to more people and then, then it just keeps spreading but around. But there were was, was some specific news outlets that picked you up, right? That picked pick, pick yeah, this video up specifically, yeah, right? Absolutely, I believe uh, MSM and CNN and a couple of different places had, you know, I think that Huffington Post uh, or some other places mm -hmm. featured it. So once a video gets embedded on like a larger news site, then it really has a greater opportunity to actually go viral. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of the main things. You try to get your video out everywhere possible when you put out a video that you've put a lot of work into and you think has the capacity to possibly go viral. So I I submit it to everywhere. So so once you launch it, do you just do you send an email? Do you have a certain list of the people that you regularly hit up and you say, hey, this is live, check it out? I have a big list. Uh, some I send emails out to, some I submit directly on their websites, but I do spend a lot of time promoting videos that I think have a chance. I mean, I don't promote all of my videos, mm -hmm. but uh, the ones that I really think have a fighting chance, I send them out. Excellent. Yeah. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you on that video, Greg. That I was have to fun. say it was uh, I actually did I, that is actually how I met Greg. I did not know him before uh, before that video. I knew of him but had never met him in real life. So it's a real kick to have him now back on Digital Natives where we're talking about our recent experience um, in that lovely video that's uh, going viral as well, we speak. I never asked you this, but what did you think when I just showed up to your house and wanted to be let in with a camera crew? Well, I really <laughs> I was well, I was expecting our mutual friend Lon to show up, so I was expecting someone, and I actually did know what you looked like, so it was easier for me. I was I, I knew I knew what you looked like, so I was like, oh, I know who this guy is. Oh goodness, what am I in store for? That's kind of was like, what's what's coming? Here it comes. So, yeah, we had fun. Got it. I, I I learned all sorts of information about about Brian from his Facebook page, and then just spewed it back to him in conversation. Asked him about friends from high school and questions about where he grew up and asked him to show me his favorite scarf that he just bought in New York and all these things that I learned from his Facebook page. That was fun. It was very fun. It was yeah. very fun. Well, thank you so much for, for coming on the show again. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how community building happens in the digital space. Next up, 
digital profiles. Welcome to Digital Profiles. We are back with Greg Benson and Kim Evie. Uh, you may note that they are married and they are one of the most successful YouTube couples um, ever to grace the digital space. I like to refer to them as the Albert Brooks and um, Anne Bancroft of the YouTube generation. Uh, so first up, I'm going to have a few questions for them. About that, would, the... that would be from the time when Anne Bancroft had divorced Mel Brooks and married Albert Brooks? Yes. Yeah. That's right. Sorry, yeah. Albert Brooks. Yeah. Thank That's you. <laughs> Albert, I like to refer to us as the Albert Brooks and Mrs. Brooks of, <laughs> of the digital space. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we're talking social media here. So what is the first social media profile that, that, that both of you joined? Uh, MySpace. MySpace. Wow, okay, Yeah, excellent. back in 05. <laughs> excellent. Yeah, probably. And, are, and, and do both of you still have a MySpace account today? I just canceled mine. Okay like maybe a month ago because I hadn't used it in several years. <laughs> so I thought maybe I should not have this here anymore. Okay. My cool. MySpace yeah. profile is my most active profile. I have all my, no, I haven't, I haven't touched it in years, but it's still sitting there. If anybody wants to look up mediocre films on MySpace, it's there. Got, got it. And how do you guys engage in social media? Are there any particular practices that both of you use to engage with your community? Uh, well, Greg, Greg, Joe. So here's the thing. We're married. <laughs> yeah, to each so, other. To each other. Mm -hmm. So um, I hear all of his jokes and all of his, <laughs> you know, constantly. And uh, then Twitter came around and I went, oh, oh, this is a perfect opportunity for you to tell other people your jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. I do. I, I use Twitter uh, mostly just to just to tweet out really, really stupid stuff. Okay. Yeah, and, and, I, and I really enjoy it. I enjoy just putting out dumb jokes into the world. Whatever I think of, I just kind of put it out there it. for however many people want to read it. If, if you could only choose one social media platform to engage in moving forward, what would it be and why? space no um no no one would say that uh i would I'd, I'd go with facebook because uh it's it's the easiest way to interact with friends and fans and um and it's the easiest way to see what everybody's up to facebook's a great time waster so i i kind of enjoy whenever i have a few minutes got know, it on the toilet or wherever to just kind of thumb through <laughs> see what my friends are up to and what is your what are what are your guys' favorite? Oh, actually, so I'm sorry, Kim. Do you want to answer that question too? Uh, no, actually, I I'm bad at social media. I, I need to have more of a social media presence, and you uh -huh. know, uh, sort of practice what I preach. Okay, so. got it. <laughs> what is one favorite online video, a show other than your own that is your favorite? I only watch my own. I have not ever seen another video. Okay. I. Do you want to answer that first? I'll, I'll give me, it'll give me a minute to think of something. <laughs> um, well, I yeah, it's weird because I don't watch as many as I should either, probably. But the first one that came to my mind was Squaresville, so mm. because Matt Enloe was actually on the show. He was one of our, he was our first guest on Digital Native, so Aww. it's really uh, he will love that you said that. He's a good guy. Yeah, so that, and it's a very whole, good show. It's a very good show. It's an excellent but, yeah. show. Um, they're very, very talented. I did not. I did not pay Kim to say very that. Very engaging, Matt. Just so you know, I did not pay Kim. To pay Kim to say that. I'd probably pick my favorite series as the uh, goat yelling like a man <laughs> series. There's a lot of videos of just goats yelling like men, and that's that's really one of my favorite things to it's watch. Not really a series. Seriously, no, I consider it a series. Okay. It started with with a video just called goat yelling like a man, but then now there's a bunch of them. Got it. Got it's, it. It's it's pretty amazing. I also watch beer and board games. That's one of my favorite shows. That's by my friends at Blame Society Films. They drink a lot of beer and they play board games. Okay. Just like the title would suggest. Cool. I'll, I'll have to check those out after the show is over for sure. Absolutely. Well, I, Greg, I'm now going to ask you a series of rapid fire questions for your digital profile. Are you ready? Just me, not Kim? Well, I'm going to get to Kim afterwards. I'm just asking you, Greg. Why are, why are you I looking have over there? Ones? <laughs> why? You're not looking at me, you're looking over at the camera. I'm looking right at the camera. That's I'm weird. gonna ask you a series of rapid fire questions. Are you okay. ready, Greg, for your digital profile? Okay. Okay, cat videos or baby videos? Babies. Twitter or Facebook? Facebook, Twitter. Instagram or Pinterest? 
Neither. Okay. Tumblr or WordPress? Tumblr. What is your favorite hashtag? I, one, I don't know. Okay, great. I don't have one. Okay. What is your least favorite hashtag? Oh, R.I.P. Suzanne Summers. <laughs> okay. Because why would you use that? She's not even dead. I know. That's right. That is a good one not to be your least favorite. <laughs> um, what is the worst social media, what is your worst social, your worst social media pet peeve? When people do bad things. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. Okay. What is your, your favorite viral video of all time? Of mine or, or of anyone's? Anyone's. Any, anyone, uh, uh, it's a, it is a butter message to the USA. <laughs> it is a butter message to the USA. Uh, a butter message to the USA is what it's called. Okay, great. If you haven't seen it, oh, you should see it. It's, it's, it's pretty wonderful. Okay, I'll check it out, definitely. Yeah. In, in your opinion, who is the next big internet star? the guy who stars in A Butter Message. <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. If he could just, if he could harness that power from that video, then it would be, be pretty amazing. What is the How would you feel if I came to your house and I ate all of your butter in front of your face and I threw it down the stairway? <laughs> Watch the video to find out. Okay, I will. What is the one thing that people would never know about you even after Googling you on the internet? I've had a hip replacement. Excellent. Yeah, if true. there is one profession that you could choose other than being an internet celebrity, what would it be and why? Uh, Don't look at me. Uh, uh, I would be a f feature film director. Excellent, excellent. All right, Kim, we are now going to ask a series of rapid fire questions for your digital profile. Wait, are these the same? Are you ready? Yes, they are the same. Oh, I shouldn't have listened. Okay. Okay, Kim, I'm now going to ask you a series of rapid fire questions for your digital profile. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. Cat videos or baby videos? Baby videos. Twitter or Facebook? Facebook. Instagram or Pinterest? Pinterest. Tumblr or WordPress? No. Tumblr. Okay. <laughs> what is your favorite hashtag? Uh, hashtag I am stupid. What is your least favorite hashtag? Hashtag I am stupid. What is your worst social media pet peeve? Um, people being mean for no reason. Got it. And what is your favorite viral video of all time? Oh boy, that is of all time. I don't know. Uh, we just watched Denver the Guilty Dog yesterday. <laughs> That's really great. That's pretty great. In your opinion, who was the next big internet star? Brian Rada. Thank you very much. It's very <laughs> sweet of you. <laughs> You're invited back anytime you want. <laughs> what is the one thing that people would never know about you even after Googling you on the internet? Oh, um, I have really small feet. Got it. If there was one profession you had to choose other than being a digital native, what would it be and why? Um, I would be a clinical psychologist because I like crazy people. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Greg and Kim, for being here today. It has been a joy and pleasure to interview both of you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Brian. Definitely. Uh, before we go, uh, We'd like to uh, let everybody know where they can find our late, lovely, and amazing chat host, Miss Katie Stegeman. Where can people find you, Katie? Uh, you guys can find me at my Twitter handle at, at Katie Stegman. Excellent. Thank you so much, Katie. That is all the time we have for Digital Natives Content Creations Frontline. Until soon, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll, we'll catch you in a digital universe near you. Cheers.